Welcome to Heartfelt Beer Reviews with yet another review. My name is Kyle Hart and today we're going to be reviewing Founders new, brand new Barrel Age series release is their Moss Agave. This is a lime goza brewed with agave aged in tequila barrels. So essentially what this is supposed to be, a couple brewing companies around the country are basically making cocktails or cocktail inspirations in beer form. So basically this is supposed to be a brewed version of a margarita. So, historically, a Goza style is a, generally for the most part, a highly carbonated, unfiltered, unfiltered wheat ale. Generally, uh, fruit forward. It does have some saltiness to it. It is a little dry, and it does have some uh, subtle to moderate bitterness, depending on how it was brewed. But this particular one, by Founders Brewing Company out of Michigan, it just says brewed with agave aged in tequila barrels. So that's, I've never heard of this beer, or this particular cocktail inspiration in a beer. Um, but it says on the back here, it says barrel aged by Founders Brewing Company 2019 release, Mas Agave. And the description of this beer says, we love cocktails, like really, really love them. If you ask us, few are more refreshing than the tart and tangy margarita. Our latest barrel-aged beer pays tribute to that perennial classic. We took an imperial goza and brewed it with agave, lime, and sea salt, and then aged it in tequila barrels. It says, consider this a party in a bottle. It says it was bottled on April the 23rd, 2019. It comes in at 10% alcohol by volume. So... That's pretty much here for the description. You know, the label's a nice matte feeling to it. It just says Founders Masagave. It's got a uh, hand holding a lime with a butterfly on it, agave leaves. Or a skeleton holding it, I should say. So, this is Founders Inspiration, or I guess their version of a margarita and a beer. And I am very excited to try this. I have not had very many gozas. I mean, I've, I've had maybe five, but uh, from what I remember is that they're generally highly carbonated. They have a little saltiness to them. Sometimes they tend to be a little dry, and uh, they are supposed to be tart and fruit forward. So I'm going to go ahead and open this, give you a pour, give you the aroma and taste, and tell you how I feel about it. Cheers. I did have this in the freezer because I just bought this and I really, really, really wanted to review it. So I didn't want to wait an hour or two for it to get cold. So hopefully it's cold when I pour it. And just straight out of the bottle, wow. That's insane. That's intense. That is an intense agave tequila and lime. I actually can't even say that this doesn't even really isn't distinctively tequila forward. I mean, I can smell the ethanol, but it's not too forward in the aroma, at least from the bottle. It honestly smells like a lime pound cake. Like, that's that's honestly what it smells like. And that's incredible. I'm going to go ahead and give you a pour and see how this turns out. This does come in at 10% alcohol by volume. A nice, nice dark straw color. Maybe a little orange to it, to the color. It did pour, it's very highly carbonated. So the head's about an inch thick. And just from here, I mean, I can smell, like it smells like a lime pound cake, which I've only really had one lime cake in my entire life. If you can imagine like a lemon cake, except mine. So, I'm really excited. I really don't want to wait anymore. We'll give you the aroma. Wow. Mm. <coughs> that salinity, when, when it, since it's brewed with salt, really, really, really heavy. I mean, heavy. It made me cough. I'm getting lime. Just a, a ton of lime. And it's sweet and tangy and almost, it's so citrus forward that it almost burns the nostrils. 
you do get a very subtle agave-ness to it and I can't really tell if it's since it's also brewed with agave and aged in tequila barrels if that's just a strong tequila presence or that's the leaves of the agave uh, plant that I'm smelling but lime for days you can smell the ethanol just a little bit it's not too forward sometimes some of founders barrel aged serious beers tend to be extremely alcohol present but since this is only 10% alcohol maybe it won't be so astringent at least in the aroma it's actually exactly as it's as it is mentioned on the bottle agave lime tequila a little bit of oak and that's basically I do smell salt other than that there's really nothing to it I mean the salinity with the citrus forward kick really just cleans out your nostrils but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste and tell you how I feel cheers oh Woo. okay so <laughs> if I wasn't awake I'm awake now that is extremely tart extremely tart I mean that's like sucking on a lime which is good I mean that that's you know usually when people take like tequila shots they suck on a lime afterward and you definitely get that and the tequila is not too forward surprisingly I mean you do get a distinctive tequila you know it's not just alcohol astringency that you're tasting you do definitely taste tequila presence and I do enjoy that I'm normally not a big tequila fan because for the most part, at least in my experience, you either buy a very high-end tequila or it's very low-end, rot gut, horrendous, like Jose Cuervo I despise. But initially, you just get a massive, massive, fresh lime citrus kick to the face. And then you get a moderate amount of the agave from the tequila and since it was brewed with extra agave, so you're really getting that agave leaf. And then it's just got a very smooth salinity at the back end, followed by just a very, very, very subtle ethanol burn in the finish. So that's just initially, I mean, that's one taste. I'm going to give it a few more tastes here to give you my basically final reaction to this beer, but... It's not bad. I mean, this is not a beer that I would drink all the time. You know, I couldn't drink beer upon beer of these, but one or two occasionally is pretty good. You know, this only cost me $12 for a four-pack, which is insane because I know that their KBS costs like $24 for a four-pack. So it's relatively inexpensive for what it is. Okay, got a very high carbonation to it I mean it's it's just it's almost like a champagne and the carbonation wise I should say and then it's got a uh, I'm picking up a very very nice creaminess in the back end I mean once I finish the beer once it goes down my throat and that's really really refreshing this beer is a nice change I'm a big 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 imperial stout guy if you've not noticed from my earlier beer reviews and I do also enjoy uh, IPAs especially the New England uh, versions of an IPA but this I would consider this more of a specialty beer because you know you don't I've seen maybe three or four tequila barrel aged beers in my life and I've never had one so this is really really a fun experience for me I mean um, like I said if anybody who enjoys a margarita would definitely love this it doesn't taste like a beer as you know you would explain like a beer tastes so maybe your wife your girlfriend would be more inclined to have this maybe give it a try if you pick up a four pack like I said twelve thirteen dollars where I'm from and I'm in the Milwaukee area I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna be different anywhere else it shouldn't be but this is out of Michigan like I said, it was brewed April the 23rd, or bottled, I should say, April the 23rd of 2019. 10% alcohol by volume. That's relatively tame 
for a barrel aged beer normally you know when you age a beer six months to a year and again I'm not entirely sure how long this beer was aged because it doesn't state how long it was aged in the barrel but for the most part a very good or let's say at least a decent barrel aged beer is at least 12% alcohol by volume for the most part but this not all, not all the time you know that's not a uh, not always a, in, or a definite thing when it comes to beer but Jimson alcohol by volume, you're really not picking it up. I mean, you can tell it's higher than a regular beer, which, you know, regular beer, maybe 4 or 5%. You can definitely tell that it's higher than that, but it's not astringent. It doesn't burn. You don't get a huge ethanol kick, which I'm very fond of, because I'm, I'm not a fan of beers when you can really taste the alcohol presence. You know, of course, if this was a 12 or 13 or 15% beer, you expect to taste that. But there are some beers that I've had that are 9, 10, 11% that they drink like they're 12 or 13%, which I'm not a fan of. I like the alcohol to be able to hidden. Uh, but this is, a, this is a solid beer. I wouldn't go saying that this is a world-class beer simply because it's a Goza style, and Gozas are already a rare style. You know, not many brewers actually brew a Goza. They are were very popular in the 1700s, but they kind of fell off, you know, after World War II in Europe. That kind of culture around that area that, I guess, I wouldn't say celebrated, but was the main... The main area in the world that drank this type of beer just sort of fell off. I mean, I'm not entirely familiar with the backstory of the Goza, but I know that in the 1700s is when it became available, and it was pop quite popular for 100 or 200 years. And then after World War II, and just the disappearance of, I guess, more Americanism, I should say, in the East, this style just sort of fell off. So... I mean, it's a nice, refreshing, new th new variety to try in beer. It's not something that I would normally go for, but I was really excited because I've had a dark and stormy uh, cocktail which brewed in a beer by the, uh, I can't remember what brewing company, uh, Firestone Walker. Firestone Walker brews a dark and stormy, which is a dark and stormy is a cocktail. You can go ahead and look that up on the internet for more information on that. But it was a very solid beer, except that was aged in rum barrels. But this, like I said, in the end, it's really straightforward. I mean, there's it's complex. It, it, tastes, ad, ad, it tastes as advertised. You know, sometimes in the beer industry, it is difficult to exactly hit the mark on what you advertise. You know, there are many beers that say, maybe a certain beer tastes like strawberry cheesecake. And... It just doesn't. You know, a brewing quality and ability really play a factor when you get into these more, uh, I say, I should say deeper complexities of beer styles and beer flavors. But this has been Founders Mas Agave. It is an imperial lime Goza style ale brewed with agave aged in tequila barrels. Available now, guys. This was just released maybe three or four days ago. I'm sure it's nationwide by now, but I'm, I'm not entirely certain. Chicagoland, Indiana, Milwaukee, Wisconsin area, I know it's available. But in the end, my review, you know, you get a very, very nice, but very tart, but in the end, refreshing lime citrus kick. And it actually kind of gets kind of a cakiness to it, which I really enjoy personally. And then you do get the agave, maybe, uh, I think that the agave plant that they brew this with maybe more accentuates the tequila barrel that it was aged in instead of uh, giving it an overpowering flavor. It just brings that tequila out more and it rounds it out better. And in the end it follows with a uh, subtly dry, but uh, you know, it's not, it doesn't take all the moisture out of your mouth, but subtly dry in the finish with a subtle uh, salinity and ethanol tequila subtle oak presence I mean I've had maybe three margaritas in my life and this is this is about as good as it gets I mean really this is probably the best cocktail inspiration beer that I've had and I've had maybe three or four so here it is Founders Masagave 
I hope you enjoyed my review. Again, available now. Enjoy. Thank you.